Hello, everybody. What's up, America? It's your favorite duo. So how are all of you ghouls and goblins doing? That's that's my take on uh, Joe Exotic. And all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I see where you're going, and yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I, I could feed my ex-wife to a ghoul and a goblin. <laughs> well, and it's crazy to think Halloween is already tomorrow. It is tomorrow. I know. What are you dressing up as? A walnut ridge sales person. <laughs> I don't have a costume this year. I won't lie. Yeah. Are you dressing up? Uh, I dress up every day. Do you? Yeah. I was excited. We the kids. Kinsey was Rosie the Riveter, or she is going. We've already done trick or treating at campground trick or treating, so she's gotten her costume. And then Ryder was Steve from Minecraft. Nice. Yeah. Do you carry the big hammer? Um, he had the sword, and he <coughs> gave up on it about halfway through. He right. gave up on the mask and the sword, so I carried them. My kids always did that. Yeah. My kids were always like, you know, you'd leave the house, you'd take some pictures, and then they were like, no, I'm just going as Batman without the mask. Yeah, see, so that's where I dress up sometimes, because then I just end up wearing whatever part yeah. I took from him. So. The, Rosie, the Rosie the Riveter, that's a cool idea, though. You know, and it was nice, because we kind of got to educate her a little bit on who that is, and... You know why she's important and because she was like I don't know if I like this idea and I was like I don't think you understand how awesome how this important, idea is. Yeah. yeah yeah so once we kind of watched some YouTube videos yeah. and educated her she was pretty ecstatic about it actually so important historically so important that there were what three women throughout history that claimed to be to be Rosie the Rosie Riveter. the Riveter mm-hmm. the pic the the iconic picture there were three women that argued over yep. you know who I think was, one even has a book I think so about being the real life Rosie yeah. the Riveter or something that's what happens when I watch TV because I watch history stuff yeah I like all that stuff yeah but so. Camping season, unfortunately, drawn to an end. Yep, that's what Halloween means too, right? Yep. yep. End of camping season. So some important things that you either should have done already mm-hmm. or should be doing. Yes. Number one, first and foremost, get all the water out of that camper and winterize it. Yep. Black water, gray water, fresh water. Yep. Don't forget the uh, fresh the the low point drains for the plumbing. Yep. Don't want any frozen lines to do a lot of damage to your yep. camper over the winter. Winterize your camper. Yep. Don't forget to drain the hot water heater. Don't fill the hot water heater full of RV antifreeze. Yes. Yes. And don't forget, you know, I think, we, and, and if we would talk to our service department, we'd probably find out that it's a really common occurrence. Don't forget your outdoor shower if you have an outdoor shower. Yeah. Because I think sometimes you have the outdoor shower on there, and a lot of people, some people don't use them, so you yeah. forget that they're there. But yeah, um, check, you know, your seals, your roof, make sure everything's clean, looks good there. Mm-hmm. That way, you know, when it does snow, we get a lot of precipitation in the fall. Oh, you're using big precipitation. words. Precipitation. You don't want that water to get down into that camper. Is that like audience participation, pres- precipitation? For precipitation. So... You know, that's a great idea. Also, don't forget, um, critterize or anti-critterize your unit. Um, yes. Obviously, there's lots of do it, DIY, do-it-yourself hacks, all that great stuff. You know, uh, Irish spring and mothballs. I saw a great thing that, you know, showed the mice eating a bar of Irish spring. So you could put Irish spring in your camper. You ju- you'll just have the nicest smelling mice in the camper. <laughs> Stay away from me, pot of gold! But yeah, <laughs> like eucalyptus oils are good. You know, anything minty kind of smell is good. And they do say, spice it up every year, whatever you're doing, to keep the rodents out because they will become immune to it. So if really? you, yeah, that's what I've heard. It's just what I've heard. So if you continuously use the same method every year, don't expect the same results because they may not care after a certain point. I, I would venture to say I have so many things in my camper to anti-critterize it. Uh, my electric bill is probably going to be more now than when I was running my air conditioner because I got all these ultrasonic things. I say like the little plug-ins. The plug-in things and in different rooms and different plug-in, plug-ins at different heights. 
the radio's playing. I would say playing the radio is another one I've heard. You know, I got these little uh, critter, the little spike things that you're supposed to put down to keep moles out because they pop and make noise. I've got them stuck strategically around the camper. I didn't, I didn't put any mothballs in the... You, you just basically, other than mothballs and Irish Spring soap, you're all, I'm doing it all. I'm doing it all. Yeah, I don't know which one works. Yeah. He just made me think of, it's almost like he home alone his oh, camper yes. right? against burglars, yeah. but against rodents. Yeah, like all the rodents have all these obstacles yeah. to go through. I, I've got, I'm envisioning spikes that pop up and impale <laughs> things. Paint, uh, little miniature paint cans. Like, Flamethrowers. Flamethrowers, yeah. <laughs> Fresh, you know, I got fresh cat, you know, the fresh cab stuff, yep. you know, uh, and it's like, you know, uh, it's not even like when I put the fresh cab down, it's not like, you know, I think a normal human being would just go, sh- 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 the, the little packets and just kind of toss them. Oh, no, I'm, I'm envisioning, you know, if I was a, a mouse, I'm going to come in here. <laughs> this is where my entrance point's going to be, you know. So that's where the fresh cab So gonna now go. you got to insert the dun. Dun, 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 Did dun, you eat dun, dun. cheese while while preparing in order to get into character? No. No. I may have had a Bloody Mary. Okay, you guys, there's two things that I thought of uh, that you should talk about, protecting tires and saving the battery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, some people, if you're not going to leave your camper plugged in, you want to remove your battery. It is not good to put a battery on a concrete floor. So, if you're going to bring your battery in... To your garage someplace to try to keep it from freezing put a piece of wood or something underneath it um, it's damaging to, to actually put a battery on a concrete floor yeah yeah see we always left ours plugged in yeah so. and um, um, put some seal lubricant stuff uh, UV protected stuff around all of your seals things like that you know just makes it easy for you to go camping when the springtime comes around Dan is your camper winterized <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, okay? I don't want to talk about it. So, for all of you watching at home, Dan and his lovely wife, Sarah, uh, are victims of, oh my gosh, we can't get any campers, you know, inventory, <laughs> inventory's <laughs> low. So, Dan ordered a new fifth wheel that was supposed to be here 60 days ago. Yes, 60 days ago. And it is still not here. Thanks for bringing that up. Tony. Hey, but the good thing is camping season's over. This is true. This is true. <laughs> and it will be winterized when it gets here. The, the, uh, another another pro. I like how you're positive about that. It'll be really nice. <laughs> yes. So, if you are like most of us, even though the camping season is only just finished um, or about to, to wind down, I know there are some places that, some campgrounds that this weekend is the last weekend. Mm-hmm. You, like other people, are probably already planning your first trip for next year. Yes. Or some, you know, a place that's on on a on a trip for next year. Yes. Because we all know how fast campgrounds can fill up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So definitely use those winter months to go ahead and pre-plan what you're going to do next year. You know, they've definitely we've listed some things here that might be good ideas for you to think about going to and want the first one I always have wanted to go to because I just think it'd be beautiful Acadia National Park in Maine I think would just be a gorgeous one especially in the fall you know? so you, yeah you could be planning that trip for next fall yeah yeah White Mountain National Forest in New Hampshire and Maine it's so awesome it has to occupy two states <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, I don't even. Mini is that? Did I get it right? State Reserve in New York. I'd never heard of that one, so I don't really know anything about it. Yeah, if anybody's ever been there, let us know. New York's not a state that I'm super interested in visiting. Of course, you know, being from Indiana, when I think of New York, I only think of like New York, New York City. City. Yeah, you, you know, don't think of like. Yeah, garbage. You know, garbageville America. But, you know, it's beautiful there. I've heard. I haven't been to that part. But, I mean, like, uh, Adirondack is bordering there. The or, Adirondacks? That's what I said. You just misheard me. <laughs> you just misheard <laughs> me. Uh, but, you know, you've got that there. So, I mean, they, they do have a big thing besides just New York, New York. Yeah, I, I you know, I and, and I get it. I mean, I, I, I get upstate New York is supposed to be really beautiful. Yeah. It just, you know, I just can't. 
uh, that's just not a place that I think about going on vacation. I mean, I kind of have to agree with you. You know, yeah. uh, Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. Never been there either. I actually have. It's a, it's stunning. It's really? Beautiful. Yeah. There you go. Is it mountainous? Like, a, is it like hilly or? Yeah, it's you know it's in in it's in the part of Virginia that. Um, it's 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 very traditional looking, you know. Like it, you know, some some parts of some states have areas that it's kind of like time forgot. Yeah. You know, like it just looks exactly the way it did. You know. And that's one of them. That's one of them. Yeah. Another one, and this could be one you could visit probably maybe even during winter months, colder months. Dry Tortugas National Park in Florida, because you know it's still gonna be warm down there. I don't know how far down dry tortugas are. I don't really either. Is there a wet tortugas? <laughs> I wouldn't want to go there. When it rains. <laughs> when it rains. <laughs> Doesn't it rain every day in Florida? True. <laughs> I'll let you know in a week or so because I'm going to be down there on vacation. Hey, I'll let you know next week. I'll yeah. send you a text message. Hey! You're sneaking off on vacation without people knowing and now you're talking about it on national, the internet. My kids don't watch this. Did oh. You just, did you just call it the national internet? <laughs> no, you misheard me. No, okay, no. fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, the, the interwebs go all over the place. <laughs> My kids aren't interested in anything that I do, so they're not going to watch it. Because they're not going with us. So what's the next one, Tony? Big Ben National Park in Texas. The great state of Texas. I've never been to Texas either. Lovely. I I would definitely be interested in going. I think I would definitely... I'm not a big city person. So, again, I think that's why, I like, New York always... I don't think about it. So, if I ever did Texas, I really don't have much interest in, like, Dallas, Houston, those areas. You know what I mean? Like, Corpus Christi area, that could be really pretty. Just yeah. saying. Back. Okay. Okay. All this right, guys. The, this was the single greatest addition to the show. To the show ever. I should have kept them away from you two children until we started that segment. More him than me, but I agree. <laughs> I have heard you hit it though. I have. All right, it's time for that statement is false. Which camper is the right fit for you? Where we have people email us, text us, call us, Facebook us, Instagram us, Snapchat us. So T- many. TikTok is. They hit us up on the national web. They hit us up on the national web. So here's your first one, okay, from Mr. Bill Brooks, okay? Okay. Bill has a girlfriend. Congratulations to Bill, first and foremost. They do plan to marry in the next few years, okay? They have discussed having kids. Both have always loved to camp and go on adventures. They have a three-quarter ton truck. They're wanting to hit as many of the national parks as they can. They're wanting a travel trailer with as much livable space as possible, but also also thinking about space for future children. We're told to be aware of length due to size restrictions at parks. So if you've got a couple that's just starting out, that's maybe wanting to keep it and looking about having a kid or two, travel trailer, reasonable length, what pops into your mind? Definitely. I mean, he's got plenty of trucks, so there's no worry there and if you're concerned about size first one that pops into mine is probably a hideout 272 yeah or like a hideout 28 VHS yeah something along that that's got bunk beds I I would say like the passport 267 BH that's another good one because the with the bottom bunk flipping up you got more storage. You got more storage space and things like that. You know, you could put a clo- you could you could put a clothes rack underneath the top bunk mm-hmm. and use the the flip the bunk up and use that for really a closet while you were traveling, especially if you're traveling distance out, you know, through uh, going out west. Even with his three quarter ton truck, you know, he didn't say whether he had a gas or a diesel truck, but you're f- you know five thousand pounds with a slide, great living space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've got a few options there. Yeah. Okay, so your next one comes from Katie Durrell. This is to each of you. If cost and weight were no factor whatsoever, 
What camper on the lot right now would be your choice and why? Cost is not a factor. Cap, cost and weight are not a factor. I'm actually, I already know, and I'm going to take my kids out of it. I'm going to say we're at a point where my kids don't go with us, which they do, but if I could pick any camper on the lot, and I'm not factoring in my kids, probably the Montana 3781 is my favorite. It's an awesome floor plan. I just, I love the big island in it. I actually like that the staircase, when you walk in, is not right there to the right of the door. It actually goes and wraps around to the back of the camper, so you feel like you get a little bit more of an entryway to kick off your shoes and... Well, whatever. plus if you've got guests, they can't see... If you didn't make the bed in the morning... They can't see your bedroom. You know, or you've got, you know, mm-hmm. your lady thing things hanging drying where you washed them in the sink the night before i'm married i know how it works i mean you know you got it i got it it. so um right now if if i got to pick anything on the lot and cost was not a a a concern the 37 uh, 61 fl uh legacy edition montana with the full body paint because that thing is just cool as the other side of the pillow man it is it is Especially with the full body paint and big, everything. Big, right. beautiful, you know. You know, we, we laugh a lot about, you know, people looking at you coming in the campground. And sometimes they're looking at you because they're coming in going, man, I can't believe somebody towed that big, you know, hunk of junk down the road. That thing been falling apart for 27 miles to pulling in the campground. And, and you know, like people walk out to like the edge of their campsite. <laughs> Boy, I sure <laughs> wish I had a rig like that one, you know. They're calling up other people in the campground. Y'all to see this one coming in? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's the prettiest thing I ever saw. Oh my goodness. Okay, great answers, you two. Now, Tony, we're gonna have we're gonna institute. You know how like in sports they have penalties for things. We're gonna institute a five dollar fine for every time you early hit the buzzer. Oh man, it could still be worth it. <laughs> Okay, so the buzzers are coming into play now. Woo! Here's the rules. This is Think Fast. We did it last week where you two ask each other's questions. Yeah. Or two weeks ago. This time I'm going to ask you the questions. Okay? First person that thinks they know it, hit the buzzer. Okay. So this is like true game show. This is true game show stuff here, okay? Okay. Greer, pay attention because if it's close on who hits the buzzer buzzer you're going to decide okay does it light up it does it does light up it does but we're so we're watching here Greer, okay question one what percentage of campers are made in elkhart indiana no no listen you didn't listen to everything <laughs> this one is multiple choice is it a 35 percent b 90 percent c 60 percent What's your answer? 90%. I'm going to say 60. Mallory gets it with a 60%. Okay. Maybe you'll calm down on the buzzer there now. Maybe you'll calm down. Question number two. Where did you get that? Where did you get that question? RBDA. I find that, that statement false. Question number two. What age range is the highest growing for camping? Is it A... 20 to 35 year olds, B, 35 to 54 year olds, or C, 55 plus? 20 to 35. That's incorrect, yes. 35 to 54 or whatever it was. Tony's correct, we're now one and one. Question three is multiple choice again. Approximately how many campgrounds are there in the US, public and private? Is it A, 10,000, B, 30,000, C, 16,000, or D, 10? 10? 10. <laughs> ten. Just 10. <laughs> 10. Does that, does that, 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 we're done. What's your answer? Wasn't there a 30,000? There was. 30,000. Eh. Mallory, you got to guess? 16,000. Mallory's correct. I really thought it'd be a lot higher than any of those numbers, though. Does that include the national parks? Mm-hmm. State parks? Mm-hmm. Wow. I really that thought it would be a lot like higher. That, than, that doesn't yeah. seem like that much. I mean, I can name like 30 that are within a half hour Listen, here. 
If you're in math class and they write 2 plus 2 equals 4 and you don't think that it's 4, that doesn't mean that it's not 4. That just means you don't get it. <laughs> okay? Some people just don't. And it's okay. We're not going to make you wear a dunce hat because you're losing right now. Question number 4. There's no multiple choice on this. What is the newest color called in the Cougar series? Driftwood. Mallory gets it. <laughs> Question number five. I'm still thinking of a retort to Dan. <laughs> That's where your mind was during that question. Actually, I, was, I already had thought of like 30 of them, but then I was like, oh, he's going to have to edit this out. <laughs> Question number five. Which Montana model features a sunken rear bedroom? Montana 377. You said sunken rear bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I couldn't tell. The I hit my button, but I hit it on the side. Uh -huh. And apparently, <laughs> it, look, it doesn't work if, if you don't hit it on You got to hit it right like on, the on the top. <laughs> Question number six. Which Keystone fifth wheel offers a mid bunk? Tony? All of them? A mid bunk. All of them? Which Keystone fifth wheel offers a mid bunk? Yeah, I mean, I been, Cougar, I should have been Montana more, High Country, what, Montana. What specific model do we perhaps carry that uh, that offers oh, a mid bunk? Okay. I Sorry, I should have. That was a poor worded question. But I'll let you go. Go ahead, since you hit the buzzer. I still should get a point. You, I answered the question correctly. I'm going to give you a half a point. <laughs> Um, so, well, in what? Which, like, which product line? Give me, just give me, of just give me one. Just give me one. 3855BR. Okay. You know another one? Uh, the Cougar, um. 30MBS. The, uh, the 30, uh, 366MB. Uh, mm -hmm. 368. 368 MB. 368 MB. Okay, Montana good. Montana High Country is a 385. So I'm going to give you a, a full point and a half. Okay. Question number seven. <laughs> what is a cool feature on most Outbacks that a lot of people might not realize? Multiple point automatic leveling jacks with automatic hitch return plus stabilizer jacks. See, I'm going to give you that. Mallory, do you have another one? Snap. Because they have another one. I really don't. Like pet kennels under the bed. Oh, yeah. If you got, I don't have little dogs, so I don't ever think of those. <laughs> like if you get, if you got a get your great get your great day in there. <laughs> yeah. You can store a kid in there too if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's not a place for a padlock, so no, you can't put a kid in. There. All right, here we go. This is a tough one. You ready? Ready. Question number eight: How many brands of toy haulers do we carry? Oh. Mallory. <laughs> I hit the buzzer before the <laughs> Ding, Five? ding, ding, ding. Four. Wrong, wrong. <laughs> Vengeance. Puma. Puma. Carbon. Oh. Raptor. Cougar. Ozark. Ozark. That's six. Tony gets it. So close, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like you hit the buzzer before you thought about it. I did. I was like just ready to go. Question number nine. What is the smallest camper we offer? Um, well, if you technically go to it, it would be the Clipper 9.0. Uh -huh. um, but if, as far as hard sided, it would be the 16 CFB. Yeah. I accept. Good answer. I agree. Question number 10, final question. And I lost track of who has how many yeah, points. We'll just have to factor it and figure it, it out. It's nine right. to nothing me. <laughs> Question number 10. Which paradigm offers a basement slide out tray? Um, Who had it? I feel like that was Tony. It was actually Mallory, but oh, okay. you conceded, so we'll give it to Tony. No, no, go ahead. The 365 reared in. She got it. So we'll fact her up, but I think, just off the top of my head, I think Mallory is our winner, winner, chicken dinner for the week. It okay. definitely was close because I messed up a lot at the end. Sure. 
She's a gracious winner. I'd have been rubbing it in. You lost. (laughs) You suck. Why are you even in this business? All right, Tony. It is time for your jokes. (laughs) These are not my jokes. Everyone at home on the national web, please remember that there's a group of people here at work that think it's funny to come by my office and tell dad jokes and they drive me absolutely insane i may or may not be one of those people yes mallory (laughs) mike so somehow i got the segment of bad camping jokes completely ironic but i love it yeah there you go uh mallory yes did you know you can't run through a campsite you can only ran why is that because it's past tense Uh, Greer, how do trees access the internet? They log in. (laughs) Why does Humpty Dumpty love camping in in autumn? Why? Because Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Tony, you are the king of jokes. Wah, wah. Wah. King of jokes. So, coming off the horrible segment of the bad jokes. I love it. We're going to the next seg- segment, which is going to be a great segment because we're going to introduce the tip of the week with our good friend Matt Gowdy. Yep. So, here we go. Let's watch the video. Hey, guys. Matt here for your tip of the week. So, what I'm going to discuss this week is slide out maintenance. Here we have a brand new unit going in for our PDI. And I just want to show you how important it is. See all in this brand new unit, there's already a gap in that sealant. So what you get, you're gonna have rainwater come down if you don't maintain your seals, start getting in there, soaking into the floor. It's gonna swell. So when that's going in and out, it's gonna start rubbing, causing damage to that. And it's also gonna rot your floor out. So that's my tip of the week. There you go. How about that for a tip of the week? It was a good tip of the week. Fit well with winterization. It did. It fits well with what we talked about at the beginning, making sure you're checking your slide outs, your seals. So good. Like it. You betcha. Thank you, Matt. All right. That concludes our show, sir. Is that it? That's it. We're done. We're done. No more? Nope. No less. Nope. And do you know what episode that was? That was 33. Yep. You know what next week's episode will be? Hmm. 34. 34. He can count. (laughs) <laughs> Only when it's printed on a piece of paper. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, have a happy, safe Halloween, and we will see you next time.